Another day, another build. What's going on guys? RGB LEDs have been a big part of the PC gaming community for about the last five years. And a lot of us thought that it was on its way out until Computex happened. A lot of different things were unveiled at Computex, but RGB was definitely the name of the game this year. RGB was implemented into almost every single computer component that you can think of when it comes to building a computer. And Noctua was the only hardware company at Computex that did not unveil any kind of RGB computer hardware. I think it goes without saying that RGB is here to stay. A couple of months ago, Rosewell contacted me asking if I wanted to use their new Rosewell Cullion MX case in a video, and I accepted. I looked at the case, and the first thing that I noticed was the amount of RGB LEDs that the case had on its fans. And that kind of got me thinking, I didn't really want to do a review of the case because case reviews, in all honesty, are not that exciting, and I don't think you guys really like watching them on my channel, at least. So I thought, this case really shines in its RGB capabilities or RGB functionality. What would happen if I made uh, all of the other components kind of complement that? AKA, what would happen if I made a computer using only RGB components? So I got started. With the help of all the wonderful sponsors that will be shown on screen right now, I was able to make this build possible. So big thanks to them. Make sure you show them some love too. Now let's get into the components that I have for this RGB only LED computer. First up, we have the CPU, which is the AMD Ryzen 7 2700X, supplied by AMD. Now the CPU, of course, it doesn't have any RGB functionality, but I still count it as an RGB component because of the cooler that it comes with, the AMD Wraith Prism, which is the same as the Wraith Max, essentially, but it has an RGB LED ring around the top. And that's the reason why I chose it over the Ryzen 5 2600 or 2600X or 2700. And essentially we're maxing out the AM4 socket with the CPU. It's currently the best one that you can buy uh, on the AM4 socket. So it's gonna handle pretty much anything we throw at it, which is super exciting. Ironically though, I am not using the Wraith Prism as my CPU cooler. Instead, I'm using the Deepcool Gamax GT, uh, which has RGB functionality. Now this CPU cooler is a little bit different than most. Yes, the fan that is included has RGB functionality, but the heatsink itself also has RGB accents on it, which is a little bit different. I don't think any other air coolers really do that. And if there is, then let me know in the comments below. So it's, it's different from anything else that's really on the market. And I'm excited to see how it pairs up with the rest of the build. The motherboard for this build is the ASUS Crosshair 7 X470 board, which is super, super beefy. This guy can probably power a Threadripper 1950X. So it's more than enough for my 2700X. The motherboard has ASUS's Orsync which is fantastic and probably the best in the game when it comes to compatibility with other RGB components. So I shouldn't have any issues uh, making sure everything works uh, it's well together. Team Group sent over a two by eight gigabyte kit of DDR4 Nighthawk memory, again with RGB capability. And I've used this RAM before. It was in my Ryzen 5 2400G console emulation box. Unfortunately, I was not able to show off the RAM because it's really, really pretty RAM. It's black with the RGB accents at the top. And the reason for that was because of the case I was using. It was mini ITX and it didn't have any kind of window to showcase off the insides of the computer. But now, because of the case, that I will get into later. I have windows everywhere, so RGB lights will be flashing from everywhere in this computer and I can show off this awesome kit of memory. AMD was kind enough to send over a reference RX Vega 56, which has about GTX 1070 to 1070 Ti performance, which is way more than I will ever need because all I do is play Smite all day. The cooler shroud is not the best, but it looks really, really nice. Unfortunately, it only has the R in RGB, so don't shoot me or claim clickbait because uh, the video card is kind of lacking in that department, but I think I'm gonna let it slide for now. Hopefully you guys will feel the same. The power supply is probably the most interesting component component in this build, GamDS, which is a UK seller of RGB specific, yes, RGB specific computer components, uh, sent one over. They contacted me to see if I wanted to do a build with it, and I thought this would be the perfect candidate for an all RGB build. I don't know much about the build quality itself. That's something that I'm gonna have to investigate a little bit later if you guys want a full on video about it but it does have 26 different colors. It has a silent mode, which is something I'm pretty excited about, and it does use Japanese capacitors. So it looks 
pretty good on paper, but we'll see once we get everything installed. Team Group was able to supply the SSD that we're using for this build and is the Team Group Delta S, a 240 gigabyte SSD with RGB functionality. Now I've gone over this SSD before, it performs decent for the price and the RGB actually looks very nice. It's one of those things that I didn't think that I wanted, but now that it's here, I'm glad I have it. This entire computer will be held inside of the Rosewell Cullion MX. Rosewell sent this over a couple of weeks or I guess a few months ago now and I finally have an opportunity to try it out. It's a lot smaller than I expected but it's full tempered glass. I mean the front and both of the side panels have some kind of tempered glass on them and it does include four RGB LED fans too. Now I'm actually going to replace those fans with the Deepcool RF120s. I have a three pack so I have three fans that I can exchange out and those are RGB fans from Deepcool as well. They sent those over so I'm going to replace those and kind of see how everything Everything looks at the end. Uh, if you can't see behind me right here, those are all the components. So uh, let's get them off my table. Let's do a nice build montage and we'll be right back. Now initially I was just gonna have the B-roll montage end here, but because my curiosity got the best of me, I decided to actually make a full RGB setup. So here it is. So as you guys can see, the computer is done and the final product is right here with the RGB setup to kind of complement it. And building this computer was a lot of fun. There are a few things that I learned and a few things that I would do differently if I kind of had my way and this wasn't a super sponsored build. First up, I used the Gamex GT in a push-pull configuration and it's a little bit loud right now and that's just because I have a very aggressive fan curve. So sorry if you can hear uh, the fans whirring in the background. I ended up keeping the Rosewell stock fans that came with the Cullion MX. We have three intake 120 millimeter fans in the front and then one 120 millimeter exhaust fan in the rear. Under the Gamex GT we have the Ryzen 7 2700X which I didn't overclock because I'm gonna let XFR and Precision Boost do their thing but I did undervolt it. I gave it a 0.05 offset. I'm using a reference Vega 56 at stock and I did not overclock it because that reference cooler it's, it's just not good enough for that but I did undervolt it again and instead of the 1200 millivolt maximum it now has the 1100 millivolt maximum the dual channel 16 gigabyte DDR4 memory kit is running at 3400 megahertz with timings at 16 18 18 38 I did try 3600 but did not end up booting at those timings and I just slept it the way it is I didn't really have enough time to mess around with the timings a little bit now performance of this computer is fantastic it's about what I expected at 10 1080p and 1440p and honestly it's overkill because the only games that I really play nowadays are Smite and then maybe a little bit of Rainbow Six Siege so it's definitely enough for that. There are a few things that I really like about this computer. First off 
Rosewood did a pretty awesome job by making the color change on the fans very convenient. The case comes with a controller or remote and you just click a button and it changes the color and, and also the pattern of the lights that the fans have. So that's super easy, super convenient and there's no need for you to take off your case to press a hardware button or have to do it through software. As for the dislikes or the things that I would change, the only way Rosewool allows you to control the fan speed without changing out the Molex adapters for standard PWM connectors is with their hardware switch on the case that comes pre-installed and like I already mentioned it only has three settings and I'm sure people would want more control than only three options. Secondly, the Deepcool fans came with a lot of cables. I can't blame them because they do have RGB functionality, so that's an extra cable in its own right, but that did make cable management a little bit more messy. And lastly, the power supply and case combo. This power supply is RGB, it has RGB functionality, but unfortunately this case does not show that off because there is a power supply shroud. As for the power supply itself, it does come with semi-sleeved cables they're sleeved black all the way up to the very end where it starts to get to the point where you're connecting the cables to the motherboard and that really threw me off I think this build would look a lot cleaner a lot nicer have a little bit more finesse to it if it was sleeved all the way if the cables were all black so that is it for this RGB LED only video if you guys liked it then leave a like and if you loved it share and subscribe and if you want to build a computer that is exactly like this or have your setup look like the one behind me, then I'll have all of the Amazon affiliate links in the description below. Make sure you check out all the sponsors, show them some love, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.